Hey, WA4MCM here from WA4MCMKits.com. Today I'm going to show you my 8 position remote automatic antenna switch built from the kits I sell on my website. The switch operates in two modes, automatic and manual. I'll demonstrate the automatic mode in a moment. Right now let's look at the manual mode, which is simply pressing the buttons on the front panel of the controller to select your desired antenna. Starting with antenna number 1, antenna number 2, antenna number 3, and so on until you reach antenna number 8. Next I'll demonstrate automatic mode, which allows you to change bands and automatically switch antennas based on which antenna the band is assigned to. In order to utilize this mode, you'll need a cable that connects from the back of the antenna switch to the back of the radio. Most radios output band data from their linear port, but not all of them, so be sure and check your radio's manual. Right now we're on 20 meters which is assigned to antenna number 3. So let's change bands to say 17 meters and you can see that the switch automatically changed to antenna number 4. Now let's change to 12 meters and you can see the switch has changed to antenna number 6. What that means is that all these antennas have been programmed to be assigned to these particular bands. Now I'm going to change to a band that hasn't been assigned and you'll notice the buttons are flashing sequentially from left to right. That means that no antenna has been assigned to it. In order to assign one, simply press and hold the button for the desired antenna, in this case antenna number 2, until the button lights up, indicating that the antenna has been programmed. To verify this, we'll change back to 20 meters, and you'll see it automatically change to antenna 3 like we started with. And if we change back to 80 meters, you'll see it changes to antenna number 2, which is what we just programmed. Now later on you may want to unassign an antenna. Simply depress and hold the button again for two seconds and you'll see it start searching just like before. After that you can reassign it to any other available button. Now let's open up the switch and look inside so you can see how it works. The switch is based on a PIC microcontroller which controls all operational aspects of the switch. The kit is designed to be easy to assemble for first-time builders and as you can see all components are spaced far enough that even people who are all thumbs will have no trouble putting them in place. And since they're all through-hole components, even those who are inexperienced with soldering should have no problem building the kit. At the back of the kit is a space reserved for the optional USB interface, which allows the controller to interface with your computer. The interface itself comes fully assembled since most of the components are surface mounted. It can be purchased with the kit or separately and can be easily plugged into the circuit board once the kit has been built. Now here we have the inside of the remote relay box. The relay box is built around these 12 volt DC power relays which are capable of handling full legal power. The circuit board was designed with the RF traces as straight as possible so as not to introduce any reactive components. This keeps insertion loss and SWR to a minimum. The circuit board traces are made with double thickness copper in order to handle the power and the center conductors of the RF connectors have a 1 kilo ohm metal oxide resistor to ground in order to bleed off any static electricity that builds up on the unselected antennas. This prevents that static from being introduced to the front end of your receiver when changing antennas. Next we're going to take a look at the companion application that comes with the kit. The application connects to the switch through the optional USB interface which creates a virtual COM port. So the first thing you need to do after opening the app is to make sure you're connected to the correct COM port. To do this you'll need to open the settings menu and since the USB interface is assigned to COM32 you'll need to make sure that COM32 is selected in the menu on the right. Another feature of the settings menu is the ability to assign labels to each button. As you can see I have buttons 2 through 7 assigned to different bands 40 meters, 20 meters and so on. You can also see that I've labeled buttons number 1 and 8 as empty indicating that no antennas are assigned to those ports. Finally, you'll select which of the two supported antenna switch models you're using, the 4 position model or the 8 position one. Since we're demonstrating the 8 position model, that's the one we're going to select. So let's save these settings and return to the application. Since it looks just like the front of the switch itself, it's pretty simple to use. Just click the button that corresponds with the antenna you want to select and it'll send a command to the switch itself to change antennas. Once that's done, the application will send a query to the switch to check and see if the antenna has been switched 
and it's only once this has been confirmed that the button on the application itself will turn blue. This is to help ensure that the communication has worked correctly. Likewise, if I press the button on the switch itself, the corresponding button on the application will change as well. Once you're done using the application, simply click File, then Exit to close it. Next, we're going to demonstrate how to control the switch remotely. Here we're using RCF Orb Server, which you can download for free through a link below. It'll allow you to connect to the optional USB interface on the switch. I highly recommend this program since not only does it allow you to control your antenna switch, it also allows you to control pretty much any radio with CAT control, as well as linear amplifiers and rotors. The first thing you'll want to do after you install and open the program is to go to the Options menu and click Other Device Configuration. Under the Other Devices tab, you'll see a middle column labeled Switch Support. You'll first want to enable Switch Support by checking the Switch Enabled checkbox. Next, you'll open the drop-down menu labeled Select Driver. You can see towards the bottom we have both the 4-position kits as well as the 8-position ones. So let's select the 8-position kit. Next, you're going to want to select the baud rate. Since it doesn't take a lot of speed to communicate with the switch, I programmed the USB module to 9600 baud. Next, you'll select the COM port. As you saw earlier with the companion application, we're using COM32 for the USB interface. Also, just like the app, you can apply your own custom labels. Just be sure to separate the labels with commas based on the guide provided below the custom names entry field. A cool feature of this is that if you use the word disabled in your label for a particular button, it'll actually lock that button out. So if you have a button not connected to an antenna, just put disabled in the custom label and it'll take care of that. Once that's all set, just hit save and restart. If you've done everything right, you should eventually see switch connected followed by the switch's information, which means the driver has successfully communicated with the switch. Now that you've seen how to set up the RCF Orb server, let's take a look at the RCF Orb Android client. Right now you can see my FTDX10 is on 10 meters. To control the antenna switch, you simply go to the menu and then choose Switch. And now you can see the eight switch buttons with the corresponding labels we assigned earlier. To change the antenna, just press the correct button and you'll see the change. Also, like the kit's companion application, it's a two-way communication, so it sends a signal to the switch to change the antenna, then waits for a response indicating the antenna has been switched. So expect a slight pause while the application waits for this confirmation. Also like the companion app, if you press the physical buttons on the face of the switch, you'll see that action reflected back in the remote app. The client can also allow you to do other things remotely once you set up your radio, like changing your frequency, and transmitting by pressing the push to talk button. So that about does it. If you're interested in purchasing one of these kits, visit www.wa4mcmkits.com contact and fill out the order form. I will respond within four to five hours during the business day and no later than the next morning by sending an invoice that contains a link for securely paying online. Thanks for watching.